Hi, everyone. It's been a year now since we last presented at Networking Field Day. And it's been a very big year for Big Switch. It's also been a very big year for our industry. Uh, my name is Kyle Forster. I'm one of the founders of Big Switch. I'm joined today by Rob Sherwood, our CTO, Sunit Chowan, our head of product marketing. We're going to spend most of the day going through demos. But let me start off with a few slides just to set some context for the discussion. I think that you are sitting here on the brink of massive change. I believe that we're in the front end of what's going to be a five-year transition in data center networking. And we'll increasingly see the world as, hey, there are the old designs and there are the new designs. The new designs built from technologies that everybody in this room has been writing about. It's an exciting time to be in networking. We believe here at Big Switch that SDN is going to play a major component in this. And when we look at what STN looked like in 2010 when we started the company. For context, it was an erector set type of model. People would get all kinds of components from all kinds of different places and put together their own cranes and helicopters and what have you. And our business at that point in time really was as a component supplier. Now fast forward to 2014, and Prashant has a metaphor that I really, really like that SDN has fundamentally changed to something that looks like the Android ecosystem. You have an entire ecosystem around hardware, and you have an entire ecosystem around software. But the expectation is that you're going to get a fit-for-purpose product at the end of the day. Uh, Ethan, you were writing about this earlier this week. right? Uh, I think our belief is that SDN has already changed underneath us, and we share this belief. Now. The really interesting thing is who's leading the charge? I want you to put yourself in the shoes for just one second of what it would be like to design a network for Google. What would it look like to be part of designing their data center? You'd have incredible access to all kinds of different technologies. But the, the interesting thing is partly what are they doing, but I think the interesting thing for the people in this room <coughs> and in our day jobs and in our evening jobs, how can we bring the best of what they're doing to a much broader audience? We believe that as we think about this five-year transition to a new style of data center networking, that it's these hyperscale data centers that are leading the charge. And we need to look at what they're doing and pick some of the design principles that they're taking, which we'll talk about in a minute, and say, what here can the rest of us pick up? The projects at Big Switch that inspire us are projects like the Daemon project at Microsoft, the Wedge project at Facebook, the Andromeda at Google. We think that there are elements of what they're doing that are very, very applicable to a broader audience. We think there are three design principles that we can learn from hyperscale data centers. On the hardware side, bare metal switches. Every one of the demos we're going to show today uses bare metal switching. On the software side, controller-based software. And we all throw around the term SDN, but fundamentally what we mean is controller-based. And we'll talk more about that in a sec. And the third part that I think the people in this room can have a very, very large role in is the idea of going away from core ag edge style data centers, the design that we were all trained on, the design that's been the dominant design in the industry for 20 years, and instead copying what hyperscale data centers are doing with core and pod designs. <coughs> In terms of bare metal software, I think, I think actually most of the people in this room have, have written about it. Uh, bare metal hardware, you'll recognize some of the brands. You won't recognize other brands. But when we first started down this path, when we were getting switches for our own, for our own testing back in 2010, it was literally sending a member of the team down to warehouse by the docks, you know, picking up a handful of boxes and bringing them back to the lab. But fast forward today, and Alan Weck was a very, very precise guy you know, even the way that he counts, bare metal port shipments represented more ports shipped than Arista, Juniper, and Extreme combined coming out the end of last year. 
Now this volume means that not only is the pricing of bare metal switches something that's eye-opening, which I think, I'll, I think that's kind of becoming increasingly common knowledge, but the other part that's maybe less obvious is that with this volume has come a lot of practicality. <coughs> it's easier and easier to get your hands on bare metal hardware. And this, I think, is a very, very important part of the ecosystem maturing. Now, hyperscale design principle two, we think of controller-based, SDN software. When I was with a group of architects from one of the hyperscale data centers two weeks ago, uh, somebody made a joke about logging in to a switch. The idea at that level of logging in box by box is for them a real thing of the past. And we think there are aspects of this that are without a doubt going to transition over to the broader networking community. Now it's software with REST APIs. I think in our case we put a, a CLI on top, a GUI on top. We put software integrations on top. <coughs> but I think as we think about what the future of networking looks like, think of the box by box model as something that we believe will increasingly look like the past. And you're going to see that in all the demos today. I mentioned that I think Core and Pod is going to play a very, very large role. And the group of people in this room with your writing can actually change the industry here. If we think about a Core Ag Edge data center, you design the data center all at once. And it's a fixed design, and you're going to live with it for five years, seven years, ten years. But it doesn't leave you a whole lot of room to maneuver. If you look at what the folks who have these data centers the size of multiple football fields are doing, they might lay the foundation all at once, but they don't actually populate the entire thing all at once. They populate these data centers over a number of years. And over that course of years, newer technologies evolve. For these guys, it's business critical for them to actually be at the leading edge of the technology so they can get the best price performance that's out there. So when we look at the fundamental design of their data centers, they're fixing pods of compute, storage, and networking. Fixing these sort of atomic designs. And you might see 10, pod, 10 iterations of, 10 instances of pod v1, next to 20 instances of pod v2, next to 10 more instances of pod v3. But each pod represents a new design choice. But since every pod is an atomic unit, the older pods are very easy to automate. So you get this trade-off that a data center is 10 times the size of the average equipment they're running is actually a lot newer than data centers that might have been, enterprise data centers that might have even been built later. Uh, the reason that I think that this is really important for this room is because the writing that you do really does drive, I believe, the, the tip of the spear of our industry. I mean, I look at all of our people here, I look at the customers that I deal with, they all read what you write. And when we can stop thinking about designing a data center at a time, which is only an event that happens every five to seven years, and instead design a pod at a time, which is an every 18 month to two year process, what we've actually done is increase the metabolic rate of our industry. I think a deep and fundamental way, and I really believe that the people in this room have the power to make this industry shift to this style of thinking. We will see innovation go faster if we do this, because we're seeing it happen right now in the hyperscale data centers. At Big Switch, we're getting there with two products. The Big Tap monitoring fabric, which we're going to demo, brings this sort of hyperscale mentality to offline monitoring, to connecting taps and offline security and network monitoring tools. And then our Big Cloud fabric that we just launched this summer takes the same mentality and says, okay, for data center cost switching, right, for switching fabrics, if you want a switching fabric that looks like what's run at the hyperscale data centers, this is our product for that. The, the way that it breaks down, very practical terms, if, if it's sort of a series, we think of it as a series of older pods, but you want to infuse some of the hyperscale design principles there, you're not replacing, you're just using hyperscale design principles to monitor older pods. But then for the newer pods, for newer projects, whether it's private cloud, something that we see a lot, big data, something that we see a lot, VDI is something that we increasingly see, a fundamentally new project that justifies a new pod, in our world, that's a, that's a big cloud fabric discussion.